Hello, my name is John Sims with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about how to configure Avaya Communication Manager for attendant configuration for Avaya 1x attendant. For 1x attendant to properly integrate with Avaya Communication Manager through the use of iClarity, an attendant station must first be created in CM. We're going to make use of the console type principle and keep in mind then only one principal or day-night attendant is possible per system or tenant partition. Feature button assignments, we can list up to 24 different functions that can be assigned to keypad and hotkeys in the 1x attendant. And for more information around the feature button assignment options, please reference the latest 1x attendant installation and administration manual, which is bundled with the software download. So it's time to get started with the configuration. I've used the PuTTY terminal emulator to connect to the system administration terminal of this CM and you see I did a list of tenant and nothing existed so now I'm going to do an add attendant 1 and I'm going to change the type to 302 to emulate 302D console I'm going to give it an extension 7 digit to match our dial plan console type again principal for this first single attendant port is IP and then we'll be asked to enter the security security code which I'll match the extension in this case. Now the name is arbitrary. I'm going to put in operator. And you see an important step here is I'm going and labeling the hundreds button assignments and I'm putting them in sequential order to start. And then you'll see I'm going to skip in range. I'm going to make several points here. You can skip around in range all you want. One X attendant will sort that data out, but you cannot do what I just did there. That is invalid where I went from 5 to slot 7 in my hundreds button assignments. So to correct this you see I'm going to delete my hundreds button assignments in slot 7. I'm going to go back and re-enter that in slot 6 and then I can continue forward in slot 7. The point again is that you have to maintain you have to fill up each slot sequentially. You can skip around in actual hundreds number ordering. The one extended console will make sense of that. Now you see I'm on page two of attendant console configuration. I'm going to set auto start to no because one X attendant will auto start itself. So now on page three, it's time to add in feature button assignments. So you'll see that several are already there by default. I'm going to add in attendant queue calls and then attendant queue time. So that'll be added as feature button assignments two and three. Then you'll see where I add in priority and these are all in the reference manual again in the installation guide and we make some recommendations of what to add for a 1x attendant so I'm just giving you a feel for some of the more common ones that can be added to feature button assignment which you can then map these feature button assignments to hotkeys in 1x attendant and the last one I'll add here is for crisis alert now on page 4 I typically do not make any changes there so I'm back to page 1 and I'm going to submit submit the form for CM to accept. So you see if I do a list a tenant like I started off the video now we'll be shown that we do have the attendant built on 100, 1000 the operator attendant. So right now I'm going to go to an important piece which I'll display dial plan analysis and you see we have a dialed string 0 length 1 and that call type is for the attendant so that way any station can dial zero to get to the attendant plus with zero defined as a dial string that will also make the attendant um, queue time and queue calls work properly in your function button assignments now we're going to head into class of service so change class of service in group one I happen to know that we have group one assigned to this attendant console so we see there's three important types that need to have class of service set to yes. Call forward all calls should be set to yes. Priority calling, which is optional, but should be set to yes. And console permissions should be set to yes in the class of service page. Now just some good housekeeping. I'm going to go back to change attendant one. So I can edit the attendant one console form. And you see that on page one, our class of service is indeed set to group one so we made the proper adjustments for the proper class of service 
group. So you see now I'm heading into change console parameters. And we're going to make some more adjustments for one exit attendant. We have our operator on class of service one. And you note there that calls and queue warning we have set for five calls. That's where we can make that adjustment where if we have or if we actually hit the threshold of five calls, we'll get the warning. Then on page two, we can set the timings. So we have the time reminder on hold set to 30 seconds, the return call timeout on hold set to 30 seconds. I'm going to add in the queue warning of 30 seconds. Um, that's where you can adjust it. If you have abbreviated dials set, then this is where you map your list for your abbreviated dialing. And if you have common shared extensions, this is where you would set it on this form if you want to have a park group assignment. So now it's time to look at system parameters and see what the, how the CM system is set up and what we're entitled to use. There's some key things to look at here for the proper operation of one X attendant console. So the first thing is to see the maximum concurrently registered IP stations. Make sure we have a sufficient amount there. See what's in use. And also we want to look at maximum concurrently registered IP econs or electronic consoles and make sure we have a sufficient number and see what's actually in use. And we see we have none in use for both of those and we have plenty of headroom there as far as instances. Now if we skip ahead to page four, we want to see that IP stations is set to yes and that IP attendant consoles is also set to yes. And finally on page 10 we want to look at IP econs and again see what our limit number is and how many are in use and again we have plenty of headroom on this system. So let's finish up our configuration tour by looking at display system parameters features on CM and look at three more configuration items as it relates to 1x a tenant. So you'll see I'm going to skip ahead to page 6 and you see we have auto start set to no because again, one X attendant will provide its own start and auto hold system parameter. We do advise that you set that to yes. And that is so one X attendant can also make use of the CM feature auto hold. Now, if we skip ahead one page to page seven, you'll see that we also have transfer upon hang up also set to yes. And that is so you don't have to hit the transfer key twice in one X attendant. And this completes our configuration tour in CM for one X attendant. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.